Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone hear and see us? Okay, great. On behalf of Kaiser Permanente, I would like to welcome you to our Thriving After 60 series. My name is Crystal Finley. I'm one of the your local Kaiser Permanente Medicare specialists here in Georgia. And for those of you that are not familiar with Kaiser Permanente, we are a health and wellness organization that focuses on total health. We have 25 medical facilities located in Metro Atlanta, allowing our members to access their health coverage as well as their Medicare coverage right in their local neighborhood. Today's series will include a cooking demonstration from one of our very own health educators, Chef Asata. Chef Asata has been a health educator at Kaiser Permanente for over 14 years. She specializes in preparing dishes that are low in salt, fat and sugar, but high in flavor and deliciousness. She has a master's degree in public health and education, and her passion is teaching people how to eat well at every stage of life. Today, she will be preparing pesto chicken zucchini boats. That really sounds great, doesn't it? Let's all sit back, take notes. Also, please feel free to follow along and prepare your version of the recipe. I will ask one thing of you to type your questions that you have into the chat box, and we'll be sure to get those questions answered for you at the end of the, of the demonstration. Now I'll return the spotlight over to Chef Asada to share the benefits of preparing healthy meals. Thank you, Crystal. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Asata Reed with Kaiser Permanente. I'm one of our chefs and our health educators. And I'm so happy and honored to be here with you today. We are going to be making a delicious recipe that uses zucchini as its main focus. We're basically going to stuff the zucchini. And um, this recipe was inspired by chicken lasagna, like a white pesto chicken style lasagna. But this is going to reduce a lot of the carbs because instead of using pasta, we're going to stuff the zucchini. And with spring coming, you're going to need all the zucchini recipes you can get. Because if anybody's got a garden, anybody trying to grow like one zucchini plant, you will go from sitting around waiting on zucchini to like swimming in zucchini overnight. So this is a good way to use it up. Um, and then the other thing is we're going to reduce the fat. The original recipe had multiple kinds of cheese in large amounts. We're going to reduce the amounts of cheese, but we're still sticking with multiple types of cheese because they give complexity and flavor so that you can use less cheese. If we just use mozzarella, this would be a one note song but we're gonna use three different types of cheese to give us complexity so that this is a more interesting dish to um, taste. Um, other than that, everything is pretty much stuff you'll find at your regular grocery store, or even your farmer's market. The farmer's markets are opening up, I think, if not this weekend, maybe the last weekend in March, your local farmer's markets are gonna be opening up. So take a look and see what you can find from some of these ingredients. Okay, obviously, we're doing zucchini. Um, if you're cooking for one, just start with two because we're going to split them in half. And if you're eating one of these zucchini boats with something else, then one half of a zucchini is a serving. If you're eating just these zucchini boats as a meal, you'll eat one whole zucchini boat. Okay, we're also going to start with some shredded cooked chicken. This is the other reason I love this recipe. Perfect for leftovers. You ever cook up too much chicken and you got a little bit left? It could be white meat, dark meat, doesn't matter. This was just some chicken breast that I had seasoned up and baked off in the oven because who doesn't do baked chicken? It's gonna happen. It's just one of those things, right? You live long enough, you're gonna have some baked chicken, a rotisserie chicken, you're gonna have some leftovers. This is about a cup. If you have a little more than a cup, just throw it in there. If you have a little bit less than a cup, just throw it in there. It's that kind of recipe. Also, I have a cup of baby spinach leaves that I just chopped up. It could be kale. It could be cabbage. Look, don't make a special trip. Use whatever leafy green vegetable you have around the house. Again, a cup, especially if leafy greens, is a hard measure. So just big old handful. And then chop it up. We're going to use three kinds of cheese today. I've got some ricotta cheese. So you want to go with the skim milk ricotta. I did not because I just didn't. I just made that call at the store, y'all. I was like, I want the full fat ricotta. I'm going for it. But you can get the skim milk ricotta. Mostly your Parmesan and mozzarella are almost always made from skim. So you've got your Parmesan and your mozzarella, both from skim milk sources. We've got a little bit of pesto. You can make it from scratch if you have a lot of fresh basil. 
Um, it's a little early to have fresh basil, so I always keep emergency jars of pesto, either homemade or store-bought. Pesto is made from basil, garlic, olive oil, and then sometimes it'll have pine nuts or walnuts in it, but it's basically a condiment and it packs in flavor. A little pesto goes a long way. So if you're not wanting to buy a bunch of seasonings and things like that, pesto can be one of your best friends. It's great in beans. You can add it to anything tomato-based. It's fantastic with chicken. It's good with shrimp. You can put it on cod. Honey, buy a jar of pesto and go ham, okay? Just play with it. See how you like it. Our seasonings today are pretty simple because pesto packs a punch and I really want basil because pesto is made from basil and we have fresh basil. I want that to be the number one flavor. So we're only gonna enhance it slightly with some Italian seasoning. The little herb blend, you, you probably already have that at home. Black pepper, because I'm not gonna add salt. I like to cook things without a lot of salt. High blood pressure runs in the family. Sis gotta take care of herself. So I do a low salt diet, but cheese brings salt to the party. So salt's already coming. This pesto, store-bought. It's already seasoned. Salt's already coming. So what do I look like bringing more salt? That's gaudy. That's gaudy. That's taking it too far. So we don't need to bring any salt to this party. Besides, with all this fresh basil, it's going to have a lot of flavor. You season your chicken when you baked it off. At least I did. I hope you did too because life's too short for unseasoned chicken. I seasoned it with the Italian herbs, just repeating the theme, a little garlic and onion powder, black pepper, and I baked it. That was it. Okay. What else do we have? We're going to do a topping. Oh, garlic, of course. We, come on now. We're cooking. Got to have some garlic. And we're going to make a topping, two toppings. One is a cheese topping to go on top of our zucchini boats. And the other is going to be a tomato topping. At first, I was like, we're just going to garnish this with chopped tomatoes. But then I was like, no, let's add some fresh basil to the chopped tomatoes. And if we're going to do basil and tomatoes, we might as well hit it with a splash of aged balsamic vinegar, right? Right, because we live in a good life. All right. If you're cooking along with me, grab your knives. Let's get started. I want to turn our zucchini into boats. I'm going to angle this down so you can see what I'm doing. I had a two camera setup and then my webcam died. So now we just going to roll with it. Okay, that's what happens when we get fancy. I'll take it back to the basics. So I'm taking the ends off of the zucchini. If you have chickens, they love this. If you're composting, toss that in there. And then we're just going to cut our zucchini in half. If your zucchini is very seedy, you'll want to scoop those seeds out. That usually only happens on the giant zucchini. But I do want to make room for us to stuff it. So I'm just using a regular kitchen spoon to scrape out like the seedy part of the zucchini where it's really soft. I want to keep the flesh of the zucchini intact because that's food. But I am scooping out the little seedy part. If you have a channel knife, I suppose you could use that too, but good old fashioned kitchen spoon works wonders. Okay, again, you could throw that to the chickens. You can compost it. Try to keep as much of the flesh of the zucchini as you can, because that's what you bought. That's what you paid for. This same stuffing would work inside of a, an acorn squash. You could stuff portobello mushrooms. You're really only limited by your imagination and any kind of vegetable that can be scooped into like a boat or a receptacle. All right, our zucchini is ready. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put it in a casserole dish, or you could use a cookie sheet lined with parchment or foil. I'm just going to hit it lightly with some cooking spray so that when the cheese mixture, you know, it's going to fall off. Some of it's going to fall off. Um, it doesn't stick to the pan. That just makes my life easier on the back end. Now, these zucchini do like to slip and slide around. If you don't love that, you can trim just a little bit. Let me turn around so you can see it. Well, I don't know. It makes me left-handed. I can't do that. But try to trim just a little bit off the back like that and then your zucchini will sit still okay so that's something you could try just flatten it off on the back a little bit okay next we're going to work on our filling by the way i have preheated my oven to 400 degrees 
I'm gonna start there. Our filling is going to be the shredded chicken, the chopped spinach, about one cup each. To that, you wanna add some garlic, the pesto, just like a clove of garlic, maybe a half teaspoon or so, because the pesto's got plenty of garlic as well. Just wanna mince that up. You can see I smashed it with my knife first to make it nice and flat. That way I'm not chasing garlic all over my cutting board. Of course, if you have a garlic press, you could use that. If you wanted to go with garlic powder or um, the minced garlic in the jar, by all means, go ahead. Okay, so we get our garlic in. I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of pesto. Maybe not that much, maybe two huge heaping chicken spoons worth of pesto. Okay, added that, added the garlic. I'm gonna add some of the Italian herb blend. You'll see that again, so keep it close. All right, we're gonna take the ricotta and add about a half a cup of ricotta cheese. Remember, this is the filling for our zucchini, folks. Black pepper. I like to use black pepper that I grind myself because you can taste it. If you're just shaking black pepper out of a container, it has like no flavor. It, it's lacking the volatile compounds that herbs and spices have when you first break them down. So I like to crack pepper into my food. It has a much more pronounced flavor. And our brains are kind of programmed when we taste pepper, like where there's pepper, there's salt. Kind of like when we taste cinnamon, we automatically assume there's gonna be some sweetness or vanilla. Your brain kind of works that way. You've been so programmed to taste salt and pepper together that when you taste pepper, you'll just be happy with the amount of salt that's naturally in the dish. Another way you can enhance flavor, besides using fresh herbs, which we're doing, is um, with acid or with heat, a little chili pepper or something like that in there. Okay, we've got our zucchini, our chicken, our ricotta cheese, our pesto, our spinach, our garlic, our Italian herbs, and our pepper. Nothing to do here, but mix it up. If your hands on cook, go ahead and get your hands in there. We just wanna mix this up and then this is the filling that's going to be stuffed into our zucchini. I probably have more uh, filling than I need for these little bit of zucchini. They're just small, but later in the season when they're bigger, this will cook probably up to six zucchini. All right, that pesto smells amazing. You'll know it's mixed well because everything will kind of turn light green. That's the effect of the pesto and the spinach. That's what we're looking for. It's a pretty tight mixture. It's not very loose and that's gonna make it easy for you to stuff your zucchini bowl. Take a boat, take a spoon, and get to stuffing, just like that. I use the back of the spoon to kind of flatten it out, and that's because I'm going to eventually be putting a cheese mixture on top of this, and it'll sit better if the zucchini boats are relatively flat. Okay. So again, if you're eating something else with dinner, that could be one serving. If this is all you're eating, because it is veg, lots of veg and lots of protein, you could just eat two of these. If you wanna bump it up, feel free to add some whole grain on the side. You could do like a little quinoa salad. You could do some brown rice and like nestle this on top of it. It'd be really good on top of some couscous actually. Any grain like that. But if you are carb conscious, say you ran off the rails with carbs earlier today, you need to reel it in. This is a way you can make a nice entree that is carb friendly, it's low in carbohydrates. Good source of protein, there are lots of protein. We're getting protein from the chicken and the cheese. And as I said earlier, cheese does bring salt to the party, so we're not adding any salt, additional salt. There is low sodium cheese on the market, it's just not widely found yet. I know like you can order a low sodium turkey or ham sub from Publix and they have a low sodium 
uh, Swiss that automatically comes with that or that you can request. Whereas you can find low sodium cheese, I mean, low fat cheese everywhere. Low sodium cheese isn't quite hit the broader market yet. Okay. So we've got our four boats stuffed, really stuffed. Okay, maybe overstuffed. I got carried away, but don't they look good already? Now imagine them cooked off in a little melty gooey. Let's get those in the oven, which is preheated, 400 degrees. And they're gonna take about 15 minutes. I'm gonna set a timer. I know people are like, oh, chefs don't use timers. I don't know who told you that story. If I didn't use timers, I'd be burning up stuff left and right. So let's make some room to make our two toppings. Okay, we're gonna make a cheese topping and we're gonna make a tomato topping. Our cheese topping is gonna to be about a cup of shredded mozzarella with two tablespoons of grated Parmesan. Mozzarella. And since there is cheese in the zucchini, you can go less if you're concerned. If you're like, wow, that's a lot of cheese. If you're lactose intolerant, check out some of the vegan cheeses that are on the market now. The vegetarian cheeses have come a long way. Instead of the ricotta cheese, you could use a cashew cheese. It has a very similar texture. Or you could use soft tofu. It has a very similar texture. Um, if you wanted to substitute the mozzarella and the Parmesan cheese, they make dairy-free versions of both of these. They call them non-dairy cheese shreds or vegan cheese and things of that nature. And I'm talking like you can go to Kroger. You don't have to go to a specialty store. You can go to Kroger and get it. So we're going to add some Parmesan. And the reason we're mixing cheeses here is because mozzarella is mild yet gooey. So it's going to give us that lovely pizza stretch. But Parmesan is nutty and salty. So it's going to satisfy that kind of salt need, that salt craving. We're gonna season this cheese, not with salt, but with more of the Italian, dried Italian herbs. And I have to take these little shaky things off. They just don't deliver. I'll be shaking all day. There we go, so much easier. Just shake that in there, give it a mix and set it aside. That's gonna go on top of our pizza boats. I'm not pizza boats, what do you call them? Zucchini boats. Oh, I didn't set my timer, hang on. So you're going to be just like that. You will overcook something because you did not set your timer, okay? Set this aside. If you have too much and something's left over, believe me, you'll find delicious uses for this later. If it's a grilled cheese sandwich, if it's sprinkled on a salad, if it goes on top of some baked chicken, there'll be uses. Okay, so these are just some um, little grape tomatoes and I quartered them. Um, I got them at Kroger and they are super sweet right now. I'm not really sure why. They're small. They're smaller than the normal like cherry size. They're quite small, but their flavor is very concentrated. So again, this was just going to be a garnish, but now we're going to use it almost like a bruschetta topping on top of uh, what all we're eating. I've got some fresh basil to go in there. Um, with basil, she's so temperamental, y'all. She's going to go bad. She's going to will. She's going to freeze. She's going to do all these crazy things in the refrigerator. Don't put this boo in the refrigerator. She cannot handle it, especially if your refrigerator is a high traffic area like mine is because I have teenagers and they like to open the door and then stand there and stare into the refrigerator as if the miracle of food is going to fall out and they don't have to cook it. Meanwhile, they're defrosting the entire refrigerator and freezer. She can't deal with that. That's too inconsistent for her. So let's just put her in a glass of water, maybe trim the ends, you know, kind of like a... a, a, a like you would flowers. Change the water every day, just trim her ends until you use her up. She's not gonna hang out long, only buy as much as you need, unless you're gonna plant basil, then you will be blessed with abundance for the entire summer. That's a great way to go. Save a ton of money. This was $3, three whole dollars, right? You could buy a pack of seeds and have basil for like the year, for like $1.99, $2, okay? So basil is one of those things, it doesn't like direct sunlight, it'll burn in the summer. But if you've got some kind of sun and some kind of shade, plant you some basil, just put it in a pot, stick it outside, you're good. She's low maintenance, but she does not like cold. She does not like cold and she gets thirsty. So just put her in a glass of water. Okay. I'm just gonna rip off some leaves. I like the flavor of basil, so I would probably put more in here than the average person would. But I mean, you bought it, so use it. That's one of the things about healthy cooking. It doesn't have to be bland and boring. It can be big and flavorful without relying on salt and fat. 
just use your herbs and spices. Use your, um, your vinegars and your acids like lemon juice and lime juice. And don't be shy. Do not be shy when it comes to herbs and spices. Go big or go home because you want your food to be delicious. And I want your food to be good to you and good for you. Right? So if we're making all this healthy food and it's going in the trash can or the garbage disposal or compost, who is that good for? And have y'all seen food prices? Have you been to the grocery store? I almost sold one of my children the other day. I was like, oh no, this is crazy. So no, we're not wasting food. We're using every little bit that we can. And we're gonna make it delicious so that we want to eat it and we like to eat it. And when you're using all these plant-based ingredients, you don't have to measure and count and weigh. You can eat plants. You can eat vegetables and you can love them and enjoy them. Things you want to moderate, meat, processed foods, cheese, processed grains, you know, the difference between white bread and whole wheat bread or white pasta and whole wheat pasta. You want to moderate those things. Does that mean you can never have it? I didn't say that. But you do want to have it intentionally. So just red and green are contrasting colors. And anytime you put contrasting colors together on food, it's going to be gorgeous. So this is going to be a great topping. A little bit of balsamic. If you can find aged balsamic, it just has a deeper flavor, but don't make a special trip because you only need like a titch in here, maybe like a quarter teaspoon. It's a drizzle. Mm. I would eat that. Like I could just eat that. That's just going to be great. A little black pepper. Okay, so we have our two toppings. That went really quick. We still have 10 minutes on the clock. Well, I guess that gives us time for some Q&A. We'll do the Q&A now versus later because we got 10 minutes on the clock until our little zucchini boats are ready. So if anyone has any questions, this is a good time to launch them out. Or if there are any other matters that need to be dis discussed, we can do that now too. Okay, sounds great. Thank you, Chef Asada. Um, I guess I'll start off by asking the first question and I think that would be, uh, what is zucchini good for? What are the benefits of eating or cooking, preparing food with, with zucchini? Well, it, it like, like other vegetables, you're going to get some vitamins and minerals out of it. But where zucchini really shines is it takes up space. There's a lot of fiber and water in zucchini. So adding it to food can help you feel full. Um, for a lot of us, if we've been meat and potato eating folks, when we shift over to eating more plants, we're missing that heft. You know what I mean? Like we don't have that sensation of fullness because meat and potatoes land. It's like boom in your stomach. There's no denying that. So to make up for that lack of sensation, you need high fiber foods, high fiber and high water foods. They will help you feel fuller. If you're on a weight loss journey, that's the difference between eating um, an ounce of raisins and an ounce of grapes or a cup of raisins and a cup of grapes. Like you want the foods that have the fiber, but you also want that water content because when it lands, it helps you feel full. Also too much fiber works against you. Too much fiber can be binding and then you have constipation issues. So again, you want high fiber, high water foods. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And zucchini can be steamed, sauteed, fried, baked, crumbled, shaved. I mean, it can, it can go in so many different ways that it's just one of those foods that we can get year round, but it definitely has a season and it's a low cost food. It okay. has a very neutral um, palate. So you can do a million different things with it. You can hide it in foods. If you've got like kids or grands that don't like it, I've made everything from meatballs, um, burgers, um, with lasagna and had zucchini in it. In fact, my turkey burgers always have zucchini in it. And one day my so-called picky child came into the kitchen. It was like, I don't want zucchini in my burger. And I'm like, baby, you've been eating it like that since you've been eating burgers. So yeah, take that to the bank and cash it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And what are the benefits? I noticed that you were using the pesto um, versus uh, using tomato sauce. Right. Well, pesto, I like as a stand-in, particularly for anyone who is a kidney patient who may be on dialysis because kidneys are really high in potassium. Ki wait, I said kidneys? Tomatoes. <laughs> what? Tomatoes are really high in potassium. So a lot of times we're looking for 
alternative sauces in place of the place where tomato sauce was like on pizza or pasta or a chicken bake you always put tomato sauce on it but if you can't have tomatoes like that pesto is a great stand-in if you make it yourself you can greatly reduce the amount of oil that's in it um, just the traditional pesto method uses a lot of oil but you can probably cut that oil in half um, use a good quality olive oil because it's going to, you're going to taste it. Pesto only has three or four ingredients. You're going to taste them all. So use good quality ingredients when you're making your pesto, but it's a wonderful stand-in and a substitute for tomato-based sauces. Also, diabetics, the tomatoes can run your sugar up. I know so many diabetics that have given up pizza or maybe it was like, oh, I'll have a slice of pizza one Friday a month. It's like, oh, baby, that's sad. Don't live life like that. If you, if the tomatoes are running your blood sugar up, Pesto. You can have pesto pizza. It's called a white pizza if you order it. Or you can have pesto on your pasta. You can put pesto on your, your tacos. Like you can really sub it out instead of those tomatoes that run up your numbers. Okay. We have a question from Miss um, um, Margie. And that question is, is, could you fill a different type of vegetable with that same stuffing? Oh, absolutely. I, like winter squashes. Wait, I got one around here somewhere. Acorn squashes. People are always like, I don't know what to do with this thing. First of all, don't buy them this big if you don't know what to do with it. Get the smaller acorn squash or a small butternut squash or even a sweet potato. You can use a sweet potato and just carve out the insides and stuff it with something. Um, it doesn't always have to be meat based. This one is. It's chicken and, and spinach and cheese based. But you could stuff it with quinoa. You could stuff it with tofu crumbles. You could stuff it with sausage and beans. You could just get carried away. Just find things to stuff these vegetables with and pop them in an oven at 400 degrees. The biggest mistake I see is people not roasting, but baking. Baking is like 350. Roasting is like 425. Go ahead and put these in a high heat oven. You can always turn it down, but you want to get it started at a high heat and then you can turn it down and let it keep cooking. Okay. Football. You can just put your fingers right where the grooves are and chuck it. So we have another question. Um, and notice that a lot of people prepare uh, meals with liquid version of Italian dressing. What is the advantage of using a dried herb Italian dressing versus the liquid version of Italian dressing? Well, one, you don't need the moisture and everything. If I put moisture in this, it'd be a gloppy mess. And that's not sexy. We want texture not baby food. Texture really just makes you feel like an adult, like you're eating real food. Look at all the things we pop in the microwave or we grab and go. You don't even have to chew half this stuff. And when you think about it later, you're like, you can't even remember what that lean cuisine or that microwave meal even tasted like. It didn't have texture and it didn't have distinguishing flavors. So we don't want a whole lot of liquid in this dish because that zucchini, y'all know how zucchini and squash are. If you look at them sideways, they're going to get soggy and mushy. That's not the goal here. I want a zucchini boat. When I bite into it, I want al dente. I want crisp tender. So I don't want a lot of liquid. Number two, your bottled salad dressings are a salt bomb. Don't believe me, flip it over. Go ahead, I'll wait. Go run over to the refrigerator, get your salad dressing. <laughs> and you tell me how many milligrams of sodium is in one um, serving, which is usually tablespoon. I don't even know if I have Italian dressing. Let me look. Let me see. I think I have one. Of other vinaigrettes. I have, now y'all know I can't see no more. Okay, so two, two tablespoons, it says 290 milligrams of salt, 13% of your recommended daily value, and that is in a private selection lemon and olive oil vinaigrette, which is a good vinaigrette, by the way. Um, this one is Newman's own lemon basil vinaigrette, because sometimes I'm lazy, I don't want to make my own, okay? This one has 280 milligrams of sodium. Mm. And I'm using, I have a soda, uh, wishbone Italian dressing and it has 340 milligrams of sodium. And wishbone is probably one of the most popular brands because it does taste good and it makes for a great chicken marinade, right? We mm -hmm. use it for salad, but if you throw some chicken on some wishbone on some chicken, it's going to be good. But now you know why. Now imagine how many of us are putting the wishbone on the chicken and then hitting it with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. salt on salt on salt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, this right here, 
salt free. Got no it. salt. It's herbs. Got it's it. Zero salt. You can use this, put salt on your chicken, and still have less sodium. Because you control the salt. That's what I like to see. I don't want things bringing salt to my party. I like to use my own herbs and spices. However, I am Southern. Therefore, I have Lowry's in my house on an emergency basis. <laughs> Thank you. And we have another question. Um, could you use other fillings besides chicken? And what would you recommend? Oh, absolutely. I've done a black bean and corn with quinoa and given it a Southwestern vibe with smoked paprika and cumin little chopped tomato in there just for a little bit of moisture. The cooked quinoa, your quinoa needs to be pre-cooked. Stuff that zucchini, stuff that acorn squash, stuff those portobellas and it's delicious. It's a Southwestern vibe. I went this way because I was feeling that Italian kind of chicken pesto direction. Um, but it, think of a direction in your head and then you can create the flavor profile. Like if you wanted shrimp fried rice, what's to stop you from stuffing that inside of a squash? Absolutely nothing. Right, so you're only limited by what you like and what, what you have on hand. Mm -hmm. Great way to use up leftovers. If you've got a little bit of, okay, so think squash casserole, like old fashioned squash casserole. It's usually cheddar cheese and ham, right? So we can lighten that up a little bit. You can still go with ham or smoked turkey. You could add some cheddar cheese and then you wanna put like a whole grain in there for some kind of filling. It can be rice, mm -hmm. don't have to overthink it. And you can stuff that right in there. And you would have basically squash casserole, but in a squash. Okay. And if you wanted to add a side item or a side entree to the zucchini boat, what would you recommend? Well, I always recommend salads because I'm a big fan of cooked and raw vegetables. Our bodies absorb nutrients differently from cooked and raw. That doesn't mean one is better than the other. It means you need both in your life. And I find most Americans don't eat a lot of raw vegetables. Um, since there's already chicken in there, you could continue the chicken theme with a little bit of additional chicken. Um, but I would really serve this over couscous, like I said, so that we've got a whole grain component going now and maybe a side salad, or you could go with a starchy veg, like sweet potato fries, something along those lines. Um, actually right. the flavor profile that's there, if you saute like some broccolini, which is really kind of bitter. That would be nice. Or this time of year, asparagus. Just double up on your veggies. You got me. <laughs> Chris, I, I think there's one more question. And I, that actually came from me because I, I definitely need to know this. Okay, go right here. What is what is another carb friendly uh, snack that you can make this this somewhat easy? Another carb friendly meal or snack? Well, both both meal and, and snack. Well, oddly, we've all been brainwashed to think that um, healthy foods are expensive, but these vegetables are not. So if you're doing just various vegetable medleys, like you could chop up some zucchini or squash with corn, either frozen or off the cob or out of a can, and you could saute that and add fresh herbs to it. And it would be a delicious side dish to any, any protein you got going on. Um, I'm a big fan of soups and salads because again, they're loaded with veggies and they're not hard to make. Soup is basically what you have on hand plus broth. <laughs> I mean, it's anything. There's like people really overthink soup and it's like, you know, don't do that. So I'll tell you some onions and garlic. Add whatever vegetables you like, maybe a can of tomatoes, maybe some frozen peas or corn or something, carrots, and then broth. And you just made soup. You want to season it, obviously. And that's where our herbs and spices come into play. Um, sandwiches get a bad rap, but it really is based on the quality of the bread that you're using. If you've got to go low carb, do more open face sandwiches or low carb wraps. So we just put our cheese mixture on top. This is gonna go back in for five minutes. The way I like to equip, like if you're doing a starter kitchen, I have a kid who's getting ready to go to college. Let me get my timer because I'll get to talking and lose track of time. I have a kid that's getting ready to go to college. So I wanna make sure he's got herbs and spices on hand, like the Italian seasoning blend, that's a big one. I'll send some Lowry's because you know, you need Lowry's in your life. But I'm going to make sure he's got salt, pepper, Italian seasoning blend, some other random like cumin, cinnamon, cayenne, 
Uh, smoked paprika, you got to have it. Not just paprika, smoked, pa- smoked paprika. It smells like barbecue when you open the jar. You have to have it. Um, other basic pantry staples will be having like olive oil and uh, more than one kind of vinegar on hand, a red wine vinegar, or apple cider vinegar, maybe just that. Low sodium soy sauce. You can make a chicken marinade with soy sauce, orange juice, and some aromatics like garlic and ginger, and it would be delicious for the grill. So um, dried uh, onion powder, garlic powder, always want to have that on hand. And then in the pantry, I'm big on canned beans, canned tomatoes, tomato sauce, like for pasta. Got to have that because you can make anything from it. Um, If you're a fish lover, keep you some tuna and canned salmon on hand. You can always make croquettes or salads out of those. You want to have pasta because it's just the base for everything and then easy to cook whole grains or not maybe not so whole grains so your rice your brown rice you can even get like brown rice and quinoa in a packet where it goes in the microwave for 90 seconds great great that could go underneath what we made today and it's semi-homemade you don't have to make everything from scratch you just want to choose wholesome ingredients and then what sets everything off is your condiments and your garnishes That's the stuff you do fresh. You get the basil day of or the day before the fresh tomatoes. You know, that little bit of freshness inside of anything that's canned or frozen just wakes up the flavor and makes it delicious and you don't have to break the bank. Oh, also your proteins. I'm kind of a fish and protein, I mean, fish and chicken kind of girl because they cook fast, to be honest. Um, they cook fast, they thaw fast. So I can buy them frozen in the bag, just take out what I need and it'll thaw quickly and I can get on with it. So, you know, when you're looking at limited space or, you know, you tend to be short on time, get those proteins that are, um, they call them IQF, individually quick frozen, and they thaw super fast. With the fish, you don't even have to have it 100% thawed to cook it. It can be like 50% thawed. With the chicken, it needs to be 100% thawed. What was that IQF again? Individually quick frozen. So if you see IQF on the label, that's what it means. And those will be those frozen chicken breasts that are in the bag together or those little packs of fish that are in plastic, but they're all in a bag together. Those are IQF. Shrimp is another one. I know people get a little leery about uh, the cholesterol in shrimp, but it's not your dietary cholesterol that's usually driving your cholesterol, it's your liver, this cholesterol you make. So you can even incorporate shrimp. It's a great protein source. And again, it thaws within minutes and you can throw shrimp into your food. All right, we are close to plate up. Let me grab a plate. Okay. But if you have any more questions, go ahead and shoot them out. Does anyone else have any questions? I can't wait to try this. I think this is going to be my dinner for tonight. I need to go to the grocery store to get some zucchini, but I think it's going to be my dinner. Okay. Portion control. This is this is where the rubber meets the road. Because when you pull your plate up to the stove and you start scooping out what you want to eat and you're hungry, you don't even go think about portion control until you've eaten about half your food. And then you go, ooh. Ooh, I don't know how much I ate. I need to put it in my food log. You have no idea, okay? You don't know. It's in your belly. This is where the rubber meets the road. When you bring your plate to the stove, how big is your plate? This is my plate. Because if if I have this plate, I'm going to take up all the real estate. You know, it's like a canvas. You want to paint all the way up to the edge. Get a smaller canvas. If you want more, you can always go back for more. No problem. But if you start with more, you're going to finish more especially if you're doing mindless eating. You're sitting in front of the TV, you're scrolling through your phone, you're not paying any attention, this whole plate will be gone and you won't even taste it. If you're doing mindful eating, you turn off the TV, you put away the phone and you savor every bite. You chew slowly, you practice gratitude because it's gonna take your stomach to tell your brain about 20 minutes that it's full. You will eat this in 10. That's 10 minutes of walking through the kitchen looking for dessert. Okay, set yourself up for success. It's a lot easier to set yourself up than try to correct it. It's so hard to correct. And at the end of the day, if it's dinner, we're tired. I'm not trying to correct nothing. 
Okay. Try to correct taking these shoes off and pulling up some Netflix. That's what I'm correcting. So at the end of the day, set yourself up for success. All right. Our babies have dinged. Let's get them out of the oven. Smells amazing. I wish we had smell o vision So what's happening here? Can you hear it? She's sizzling. Okay, don't drop it on your expensive MacBook. Okay, but as you can see, the cheese is melted. If you want, you can pop it under the broiler so it can brown, get a little browning on top. That's the beauty of the mozzarella parmesan combo. Let's see if we can get one of those amazing shots. Now, again, if you want some grains, have you some couscous right here. You can have lemon basil couscous. You can keep repeating that basil flavor. Um, or you could just go with some jasmine rice. You can have pasta underneath. Let's see if we can get one of these little babies. See that cheese pull? Thank you, mozzarella, for being gooey. So even if you're watching what you eat, by having that little teaspoon of mozzarella on top, you got some goo factor that's got you wanting to eat your healthy food. It smells amazing, which is going to make you want to eat your healthy food. And it looks amazing which is what which is gonna help you wanna eat your healthy food. This is not George Foreman chicken and steamed broccoli over brown rice, okay? I don't know about you, but I cannot eat that every day. There we go. Precious, look at that, oh my God. Now let's make it sexy. This can go right over the top and off to the side. And again, contrasting colors. I'm gonna put a little just like that, just running across. There we go. Ton of basil, ton of tomatoes. That's almost like its own little side salad right there. Okay. And it's its own garnish. Where's my phone? I need to put this on Instagram. Look what I did. I made it, I made it, okay. Easy, I didn't even break a sweat. Like, I don't even think I chopped anything, guys. Like, outside of splitting the tomatoes. That is super easy. The oven does the work. That looks fancy, but it is a zucchini boat. So in theory, if you put that on a kid's plate, they'll eat it, because it's a boat. They stuff the boat. My trick with kids is they eat what they cook. That doesn't mean they make this whole thing. That means they just stirred the, the the toppings together, you know, like get it in a bowl, let them measure it, have them stir it together. Okay. Have them stuff the boat, have them sprinkle the cheese. They don't have to do it all, but they could do some of it. Kids eat what they cook. Kids eat what they grow. If all we did was grow the basil, maybe let's go outside and pick some basil. They'll eat the whole thing just because their, their basil is in it. And that leads me to kids eat what they have equity in ownership. Okay, so if they poured the rice and stirred the rice, that's their rice. If they grew the basil, that's their basil. If they stuffed the boat, that's their boat. You could put 12 of these in a pan, but you better make sure they get their boat that they stuffed because that's the one they're going to eat. Mark it with a toothpick or something, okay? All right, so I'm going to box this up and send it over to you. You ready? Perfect. <laughs> send it. Make sure to send it FedEx. Right. It might still be hot. Don't send it UPS. It may not show up till next week. <laughs> it looks amazing. My stomach is over here growling and just saying, feed oh. me, feed me, feed me. And another thing, it's a knife and fork meal. So again, for my meat and potato folks, you miss all that kind of tactile interaction with your food. This is a knife and fork meal. So you still get that same satisfaction. Sounds great. Any yeah. other questions? <laughs> it looks like we have one more in the chat. If you like your zucchini more done, can you cook it a bit in the oven first and then stuff it and bake it again? You can, or you can make your life easy, sis. Just leave it in the oven. Like, just leave it in the oven. What you might want to do. When you put your zucchini boats in here, before you go in the oven, is pour a couple tablespoons of either chicken broth or water in here 
and it'll steam it from the bottom while it's cooking from the top. You don't have to cover it. It'll just handle it itself. Just let it cook because it's pretty tender now. Remember, we scooped it out so it's not solid. It's pretty tender now, but it's holding your shape. If you like your zucchini longer, I say give it another five minutes, maybe 10 max, and it'll cook. It'll cook away. It'll cook completely flat. Sounds great. Well, thank you, Chef Asada, for sharing that amazing recipe with us. It's definitely going to be on my menu for tonight. That is, I'm trying it. I'll send you a picture. It might not come out just right, but I'm definitely going to try it. But before we um, go and uh, let everyone leave us today, I would like for um, my colleagues to introduce themselves. And I also want everyone to keep in mind and join us for the next series, which we're doing these series on a quarterly basis right now. But the next series will uh, take place on May the 11th. It's Ask the Expert, the Elder Care Attorney. And you can also register for those upcoming events using the same link that you use today to register. And also we will be sending out the recording of today's presentation so that you can review it. Be sure to share that with your friends and your family and invite someone to the next series. So right now I'll turn it over and I'll let my um, colleagues introduce themselves and we'll let um, Malcolm Talley close us out. <laughs> so we'll start with Joe. <laughs> hey there everyone. I and thank you chef. I really enjoyed this one. It does look like you know I love zucchini. I love always love zucchini and squash casserole. So really really love this kind of twist on it and, and look forward to trying it. Also the the Southwest version of it that sounds amazing. I'm gonna have to do some experimenting on my own and see what I can come with, come up with along those lines. But thanks everyone for coming. This has been a real pleasure. I'm Joe Mays, uh, local Medicare specialist with Kaiser, kind of focusing on Cobb, Cherokee, North Fulton. Of course, if there's ever, ever anything that we can do for y'all, please let us know. And of course, we look forward to that, that next session coming up before too long. everybody. I'm Nakia. Thank you, Chef Asada. I am definitely going to try this recipe, um, especially with an acorn squash. I love acorn squash. So I'm definitely going to try that Southwestern mix with that acorn squash. So my name is Nakia, again, your local Kaiser Permanente representative, focusing on Gwinnett, Newton, Barrel, and Walton. And if you guys have any other ideas that you'd like to see during this series, please feel free to reach out to us and um, share those ideas with us as well. Sonia? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Sonia Ford and I'm the group account manager for the Georgia region. So I service all of our retirees and our employee employer groups. Um, thank you again, Chef Ashada. I really enjoyed the recipe and I'm looking forward to creating this, this on my own. <laughs> and then we'll introduce, um, let Eric introduce himself. He's the man behind all of this, the scene. <laughs> making all this happen for us today. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Chef Asada. I will be trying this uh, as soon as I am uh, done here. I'll be trying it because <laughs> I'm hungry. Uh, but we hopefully, um, we definitely uh, would love for you guys to join us for our other uh, great sessions that we have coming uh, throughout the year. So thank you guys so much. Okay, um, I'm just a little bit country myself. So, Chef Asada, that is fantastic. I mean, you know, this right here is something else. I don't bit my lip, my inside of my tongue, and everything else. But uh, anyway, it looks delicious. So, thank you very much. I, I mean, through the years, I've seen your work, so I know you do fantastic work. But everybody, my name is Malcolm Talley. Um, I'm the uh, interim manager here with Medicare uh, Sales in in the Atlanta area, and this is an awesome team. I tell you, everybody you know, bring something to the table. So uh, look, I, if you need anything, just let Eric know. Eric will get everything for you. He the man behind, he, he the man with the players now. I'm telling y'all this right now. So if you have anything, I'm pretty sure you have his email address and Eric will get that information out to us. Um, and we want to bring Chef back on again. Y'all better, you, look here, if you want Chef back, you better just clap or something. Give her something now because uh, she's going to be back in uh, the series that's coming up. Uh, we put a lot into it. 
Eric is there and he's making sure that you're going to get some fantastic people. And also all the other agents, they put their time and effort in the ensuring that you're going to have a wholesome, healthy program and it's going to feed you physically and mentally and also, you know, with your health care. So we want to thank you all. And I'm going to turn it over to Crystal. Thank you all. Okay, thanks everyone. Once again, um, I do thank you all for joining us today and we're excited um, and we look forward to seeing you um, in May, if not before then. So stay tuned from, for some exciting news coming forth um, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening. And if you ever need anything, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be more than happy uh, to assist you. We are your community partner here at Kaiser Permanente. So we look forward to servicing you in the near future.